nerds what's going on guys we're uh we're gonna bring you a different video you guys can see not in the bird shed we're actually in my home office you can see my desk down there um my boy has a a bearded dragon that he's had for the almost a year now he's hiding down here he's like what's up guys um he's actually a really really good bearded dragon uh we've really enjoyed him but um actually before we get to it um this is this is the my one of my old hoodies sporting one of my old hoodies um a few videos ago i did reach out to some of the folks and sent you some bird nerd merchandise we've got a bunch more i, I still have some of my older um bird nerd logos i've got some um water vases or you know flasks and stickers a few other things um so send a shout out guys subscribe share the channel channel send a shout out drop a bunch of comments let's see if we can uh get 5000 likes on this video so that we can uh send out some free merchandise some free bird, bird nerd merchandise to you guys We'll be selecting a few winners so drop some comments down below like it subscribe share the video um, so we can uh, share the bird nerd love and um, be able to reach more people in the world uh, about our birds so like i said today's gonna be a little bit different um we're gonna hatch some eggs out so we uh, reached out and we're gonna we got a new incubator, so we're gonna do a product test on this incubator. We just bought it off of Amazon. It had, at the time that I bought it, so I've had it for about a week, uh, it had just above four stars and seemed to have pretty decent reviews. So we're gonna show you the incubator and then I just got my shipment of button quail eggs in uh, earlier today. Um, so I'll open up the box, show you guys the button quail eggs and then we're going to let them rest overnight and put them in tomorrow. So hopefully uh, we guys will be able to see that. And then we'll just kind of follow along the process of incubating the eggs and seeing what we can do. So let's take a peek at this uh, incubator, see how it does for us. It's first time using it and uh, kind of go from there. Okay. So you can see, um, so it's called the M16 egg incubator. It's a really simple setup. It has an automatic turner. These are just wooden eggs. <laughs> they actually came with the incubator. My kids think they're real chicken eggs, but they're not. Um, it's, it's got a temp reader on the top that reads in Celsius, which is just fine. It's got an increase, decrease button. I've played with those a little bit and I haven't seen a difference on them. Thankfully, it, it says that the machine's preset to to go to 38 degrees, which is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. <coughs> Excuse me. It does have uh, a little spot here to turn the light on and you can candle your eggs. So that'll be cool. So um, we'll have to, once we, let's get this turned off here. There we go. Once we get our eggs opened up, button quail eggs usually are pretty dark in color. So sometimes they're really hard to follow the fertility process and, and growth within the egg, just because the eggs, the shells are so dark, it's hard to see through them, but hopefully we'll get a couple lighter eggs and then we'll be able to um, incubate them on and kind of follow them through the process. We'll, we'll probably try and put them on the light here, you know, a couple days or every few days, just to show you the, the progress and process and, and really kind of see how well this little incubator works. So we bought this off Amazon. I believe it was like $80. It just had above four stars. It's got an automatic turner in there. It comes with some extra, some extra rails and you can, you can adjust the rails. So we'll have to adjust these, make them smaller for the button quilt eggs. It has a little, hose with a, a water bottle 
set up there so it, it naturally feeds water in there as as the um, as, as the water dries up, which is nice. So once your bottle's empty, then you can put in more water there. So I think so far it's been pretty good. The one thing I am a little concerned about, so I've had this up and running for about five days now. I got this before the eggs and wanted to kind of get it all set up and test it out first. It has a lot of open plastic area. So my, my office in here, it doesn't get a whole lot of traffic flow or, you know, drafts or anything like that. But it tends to drop in temperature pretty quickly and then it, you know, heats back up. And so one thing I know that the manual recommends if it does that to put the styrofoam top back over this part. So we might do that. We might just keep the styrofoam piece over this just to help insulate this plastic a little bit better in hopes that we'll have a, a more consistent temperature within the incubator and the eggs will, will do better overall. So, um, but yeah, and then the, the lid, it just lifts up like that. So it's pretty, pretty good there. You can see some of the humidity marks there that it fills up. And this just self feeds it, the water as it gets lower, and then it just feeds it until it fills back up. So. We'll see how it goes, guys. Um, like I said, it's it's a cheaper incubator. Um, we I ordered ten button quail eggs. Um, these button L, button quail eggs came from a gentleman, uh, Gary Landry, from Louisiana. I've bought from him before in the past and have have, have had great success. All right, guys. So we've got our eggs here. Like I said, um, Gary's a great guy, great resource. He actually has a lot of information online. Check out his website. I'll put his website down below for you guys to go check out. I'm, I, I'm not getting paid to promote him in any way, but I've just had um, in the past great experiences with him in hatching button quail eggs. I know he has more than just button quail eggs, uh, or at least used to in the past. Uh, so check him out and, and do that. I also have 20 more eggs coming from we bought some eggs off of ebay they'll be they should be coming they haven't shipped yet so uh, it may be that, that these eggs will hatch out probably about when we'll get the, the the other shipment of eggs which will be great gives a chance to kind of see how the incubator performs hopefully hatch out some of these eggs and then um you know really hopefully see how the, the next batch goes but all right let's see here Here is our button quail eggs. And it looks like most of them are a darker color, which is okay. Um, it just might be a little hard to uh, candle them, but we'll try it out. I'm gonna mark them, you know, one through 10. I ordered 10 eggs, we got 10 eggs here, so I'm super grateful for that. And maybe he put the other eggs on there just to add some volume to the box so that uh, everything works out well there, but um, yeah, looks like they're all in great condition, shipped nice and packaged tightly so that they're not moving around. Um, great little system that he's got here, so very cool. And hopefully we can uh, get us some bunk colleagues. So we'll, we'll let these sit down here. You can see all the different colors. Got everything from kind of a dark brown to a light blue teal to almost a cream color and a few in between. Kind of a couple of, a couple of them have a little bit of a bluish tint, so. I'm excited guys. I've it's been a long time since we've had some button quail and I, I'm even more excited that we're working on the, the aviary so that we can have some button quail on the aviary ground and kind of have some natural look there, which I think will be awesome. So well we'll uh get them put into pulled out and put into the incubator. Alright guys, it's the next morning. We were able to let them sit out for a while. We got the fake eggs pulled out, put the, the button quail eggs in. So we had 10 total. This button quail egg was cracked at the end, has a little cracked and looks like it's an old crack, Not maybe not so much from shipping because the yolk inside is all dried up. Um, so that one, we're gonna discard that one. And then 
we have numbered all of the eggs, one through nine, and tried to center them in the middle underneath the fan and the heater in hopes that it'll kind of maybe keep them centralized. They might spread out a little bit more as this moves and, and shifts around the incubator, but um, we'll kind of do that. We'll uh, let them incubate for probably about four, five days, and then we'll pull them out and we'll we'll put them on our, our little um, nightlight here and see if we can see if any of the eggs, I mean, this one's not a good one, but like I had mentioned before, it might be a little difficult the button quill eggs are darker, so hopefully we will be able to see some vein development and, and whatnot inside of our fertile ones as we progress along. So we'll see you next time. Also, like I had mentioned before, um, I threw the styrofoam back on it just to help cover up a good portion of the plastic in hopes to help the temperature stay a little bit more consistent and the eggs to do better. Super excited guys. Egg number one looks to be clear. guys so we're on what are we day six of incubation um, I just pulled the eggs out candled them um, I could see that at least three of the eggs were not fertile and the <clears throat> two of the two of the three eggs were a little cracked so I don't know if they were cracked uh, during shipping or or what but um, definitely Got some that weren't fertile and then the dark brown eggs so you can see some of those darker brown eggs so i know number one and number six are not fertile for sure and there's one on the other end some of those darker eggs i just even with all my lights off and it pitch black sitting on top of that i just can't um see in the eggs it's too dark so i couldn't see through them so that's good so hopefully we've got some development in there um with three of the eggs being infertile, we had one cracked that came. So we're down to about six eggs that could possibly be viable. So um, even if we could split the difference and get three of the six that hatch, um, hopefully we can get that to happen. But anyways, just wanted to update you and I'll, I'll throw a couple videos here of the eggs candled and just how difficult it is to, to see through them on these darker colored eggs. Um, but hopefully we've got some fertility and we'll get some chicks here in about a week and a half. Leo says hi. So does our, my boy's lizard Spike. He says hi too. All right guys, we're on day 14. So I just, I just took out the, the egg turner. And we've got the ten egg, the nine eggs there, uh, ready to go. Um, if, if you saw in the the eggs earlier, so the lighter colored eggs, four of them we could tell were not fertile, but the dark eggs, the dark brown eggs, we couldn't see through them uh, with the with the candling light. So there's some hope that those dark eggs are fertile. They do definitely feel heavier than the eggs that are not fertile. So I think that's a good sign. I haven't seen any uh, pipping yet. I looked at the eggs when I took the turner out and, and uh, tried to see if I could see any pipping. It's day 14, so we've got a couple more days, two or three more days before they really 
uh, potentially hatch out. So we'll keep a close eye on them and hopefully we can, if any of them do hatch out, hopefully we can get some, some of that on video for you guys. Also, I've got two more boxes of uh, button quill eggs coming this weekend that we'll put into the incubator after these hatch in hopes that if for some reason none of these hatch we've got a, a second round with a lot more eggs probably about 25 plus eggs to put in here in hopes that we can get some button quail chicks and kind of start our own our own uh, button quail farm again we've had them many times in the past and it's been a few years since we've had them we love them the kids love them and so we're excited to hopefully see if they'll hatch all right guys it's the morning of the 17th or day 17 of incubation so these guys should be hatching any minute or any day i guess you could say um <clears throat> with we know that some of the eggs were not fertile so most of the the lighter blue eggs were not fertile but the dark brown eggs i couldn't see in them but they definitely felt a lot heavier than the others so i hope i'm hoping that there's some development in there and hopefully we'll get some eggs hatched out i'm just going to open up the lid real quick and see if i see can see any of the eggs if any of them are pipped or not um that'll give us a good indication if we should expect some chicks so let's uh pull this off here all right so you can see right off the bat see that right there Put my finger on it right there that egg is pipped Ooh, yeah. so we should be getting a chick coming out of that one pretty soon and then i'm trying to see if any of the others are pipped or not don't see any there and just because they're not pipped doesn't mean that there won't be a chick don't see anything there, but hopefully, Dad. hopefully we'll get a, yeah. yeah, that one's definitely pipped, so we'll, should get a chick out of that one here probably tomorrow. So hopefully some of these other, hopefully this one and this one, this one will at least hatch. That one feels pretty full too. So hopefully four of the nine we'll get something out of and then we also we've got some more eggs here and some more eggs here that we're going to put in as soon as these guys hatch out so super excited we'll get us some more button quills another one did three of them hatch yes oh my hatch. goodness this one is Well, folks, the moment has arrived. We had three chicks hatch out today, um, which, like you guys saw in the video, is so hard to see the button quill eggs and if they're fertile or not, just with that dark color. Um, it really is pretty tricky to see. So um, the other eggs feel a little full. I tried to put them up on the candler and really couldn't see anything. So that could mean there's 
nothing, but it could mean that there's full chicks in there and we'll give these eggs another couple days uh, to hatch out. So I think we'll, uh, we'll let the chicks in, it's night time. We'll let the chicks rest in this tonight and then we'll pull them out tomorrow, get a little cage ready for them and hopefully just make them right at home and they'll be nice and happy. And we're super excited, all the kids. I've got four kiddos. We're hoping that maybe one more chick will hatch out. Each of them want to take a chick and name them. So we've got two yellow chicks and then one uh, dark chick there in the back. Um, we're really excited about them. They seem to be doing good. And hopefully maybe we'll get some more eggs that'll hatch out. So they've done really good. So we'll take them out and let you see them. So fun. This little guy, he's so curious. He's the one my boy wants to name. He said he might name him Darth Vader. Assuming it's a boy. <laughs> Two yellows and one dark. And one a mama. They want a mama, is that what said? Yeah, they want to snuggle up to a mama. Maybe he's trying to burrow in you. Yeah, they're both trying to. So well guys, we got the three chicks out. We just got a little temporary holding box. We got a little little heat pad below them. Um, these have all, they've also got our two heat lamps here from our bearded dragon cage. So I think they'll be good. I'm gonna leave them here for just a few days, probably two, maybe three days. And then I'll have um, their transition cage set up out in the bird shed where we'll grow them out and then we'll put them in one of the aviaries and hopefully kind of get us a little button coil operation going on here. So such so cute guys. We've got a solid yellow one, uh, which hopefully means that it'll be white. And the other one's a, a kind of a little bit duller yellow. So it's probably going to be kind of like that, the white reddish color. And then the dark one will be um, most likely a, a normal, whether it's a male or female, not sure, but um, such cute babies. They're looking pretty good. They're doing good. I just put them in here so they're all tired and sleeping and cuddling and I've got some food. We've got a little water dish here that's just tiny um, so they can't drown in it. And then we've got some crushed up starter mash. We'll also give them some hard boiled egg tomorrow. Let them eat from that too. But I think overall guys, we had uh, some pretty good success with this. So really five of the 10 eggs, um, two of them were cracked upon arrival. The other three didn't look like anything developed at all in them. And then the other five, like I said, were too dark to really tell um, whether they were fertile or not. And at least three of the five hatched out. Um, so I guess of the viable eggs, that's a little bit over 50%, but we did get some more eggs in. So we're gonna do another round. We got the incubator all cleaned out and we've thrown them in already. They've, these have been waiting for a couple days. The other eggs that I'm still waiting to hatch out, I do have them in there still, but they're in a, a bigger section. So hopefully as the, the other eggs are turning, it shouldn't touch them. Um, but we'll see how it goes. If in uh, two or three days, none of, the, none of those eggs hatch out, we'll just go in and remove them and hope that our next batch yields more chicks. So I think uh, overall the hatch rate was pretty good considering the eggs that we had viable. Um, and then I think the incubator did pretty well. It's stayed temperature fairly consistently. I did put the styrofoam back on it just because it has all that um, plastic surface area. I just put the lid back on it so it's not quite back to 38 degrees, but it gets up there really quick. The water feature has done pretty good. So I think overall, for the price that I paid, which was well under $100, um, I just took out the shipping box there, but I, I would say it was pretty good results um, for what we bought. And we're gonna test it out again and see how they go and kind of go from there. 
already back up to 38. So good little incubator with some cute chicks. Look at him, he's just burrowing down in there. So cute. Thanks guys, hopefully you enjoyed.